Um, whew. I catch my breath. I, uh, <laughs> I ran to get here. <laughs> I was running behind. I was doing research on, um, mic stands for my, uh, PS4 mic because the other one I have sagged and broke because it was a piece of crap and it was supposed to be really, really good. And it's not. It's like, it was like one of the top recommended. And it just, it was terrible. It broke. <sighs> hey, yo, 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 yo. I hope you guys are excited for the boogeyman. Because I, I love this game. Um, in like a very fun, campy way. Whew. <sighs> Yeah, well, a funny, funny story about the, uh, about the mic stand. Uh, my mom accidentally broke it. <laughs> I had it turned away because it was kind of getting in the way when I was gaming, and she leaned on it, and it snapped. So, binge. All right. So I'm looking for a good replacement one. All right. So, there is no new game plus for the boogeyman. There is for the. Uh, Hanged man. And I figured out my crashing problem too. So the boogeyman should not crash when I have other windows up. Uh, cause I'm also achievement hunting in this one. So I'm definitely using a guide. Um, I'm going for my first run of the good end. Uh, this is unique from Yuri's other games in that you have to hit happy ending flags, um, for the good end. Otherwise playing the game normally, um, and doing everything correctly will just lead you to one of the bad ends you actually have to hit happy end flags so usually it's just you do things in a certain series correctly and it will unlock the good end but nope may as well just open this before i even start this one's got voice acting um i i will say go easy on the voice actors uh some of them are amateur um i definitely prefer some to others um uh, I did say there's a lot about the crooked man in this game, so you know David's in this game. I will say the uh, voice actor for David is on point. He is wonderful. He is what I was trying to emulate. And uh, the Let's Player I was talking about in the last game, Manly Badass Hero, voices a minor character. Um, it's very funny. Uh, Yuri's a fan of his, so I think that's great. Um, but it's funny because, uh, in his playthrough, whenever he gets to his character, you know, and, or, you know, his character's going to have lines because he always goes, oh, cringe. He doesn't like listening to himself. All right. I also, um, am letting this one run a little bit longer because it's a Saturday. So, and I also don't have an idea for a stopping point in mind. So let's go. Oops. It would help if I clicked inside of the game now wouldn't it i would do it Uh, your phone. Your phone's ringing. Are you asleep? That said, some of the, uh, some of the lines delivered and some of the actors are funny, so, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> No, no. I was just... thinking. About what, sir? How's the suspect doing? Still not out yet. It's been three hours, so I'm sure he'll be here soon. But man... Really not gonna answer? I'll call back later. Man, Keith, do you ever answer your calls? Anderson was groaning about it, you know, wondering what's even the point in calling you. 
Ah, sir, he's coming out. Uh oh. What? He's got a woman behind him. I think she came in after. You think she's with him? This isn't good. Won't be able to arrest a guy like this. Let's go. Tell Squad B and C. We'll get him in that alley up ahead. Hold on a second, sir. She might be a civilian. We should really wait until he's alone. And are you going to take responsibility if he kills her? Come on. Police tyranny strikes again. The cold, ruthless detective shoots down yet another criminal. Civilian woman, forever traumatized. Hi, Manly. <laughs> they got they got a skinny white boy to voice a black dude. I love it. We tried to ask Keith Baring, the detective responsible, to shed us some more light. But he stood at the station entrance, smoking a cigarette, and told us this. The visitor's entrance is that way. Seems that he sees truth seekers like us as unwanted guests. Well, what do you know? Doesn't say a word about the criminal, nor that the woman was a prostitute, or how we took some injuries of our own in the gunfight. Reporters, am I right? I can read gossip myself. I don't need you reading it out loud. Keith, you're a real hit with these guys. This is the fourth article by my count. I'm jealous. Just tell me what you called me in for. I've got good news. I'm giving you a vacation. A month, in fact. Not a chance. There's no time to rest. There's too much I need to do. You've got a good lackey, right? Leave it to him. And stretch your wings a bit. Dick, I'm telling you, there's no way. I'm ordering you as your superior. If you don't want to travel, consider it house arrest instead. You aren't fit to bear the brunt of the media. I can handle the rest real well. So, go on, take a break from the crime scene. Hey, but I didn't say you have to twiddle your thumbs at home for a month, right? Here's a little present. There's this old castle they're promoting as a tourist spot. There's a sort of test run tour two weeks from now. Truth is, me and the wife were gonna go, but I say you do it. How many years has it been for you two? Helena will be ecstatic. Now, put down the gun and the notebook. We'll need them on vacation, right? Go home for today. You can hand over your work tomorrow. Just one thing. Enough of the blurring music you can hear in the hallway. <laughs> Meta. Welcome home! How was work? Same as usual. You look tired. Are you alright? I'm fine. Oh yes! I got a fantastic present for Mr. Anderson's wife! Look at these, honey! Two invitations! A three-day stay at an old castle. Won't that be wonderful? Dick already told me. Gave me some time off for it, too. Well, if you aren't too tired, I'd like to go myself. What do you think? If you're going, then I'm going. I'll tell our travel agent. Thanks, honey. I can't wait. I've got some work to take care of. Go to bed without me. Night. Good night. All right, I am actually uh, in control now. Right, okay. I am Keith Baring, and that's my wife, Helena Baring.
So yeah, as usual, I'll actually try to be quiet during uh, cutscenes, but I actually have the liberty of speaking in between lines um, because I decide when to continue. Ah, Lodi. Stop, stop. <laughs> okay, there we go. Can't do anything. Ah, the bearings? Stevie. I've been waiting for you. I'm Stevie Small, the tour conductor. I'll be your guide for this tour. Thanks. Now that you two are here, all the attendees are present. Please come aboard. We'll be leaving in roughly 30 minutes. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Ow, I am back. Ah. Um. I was trying to. Ow. I was trying to open a jar for my mom. Ow, of pie filling. Didn't work. Hurt my hand really bad. Ow. Okay, let me get back in the game here. So sorry about that, guys. Wow, what a ship! The five hour trip to the island should go by in no time. I'm going to go introduce myself to the others. What about you? I'll head out later. You go in ahead. All right. We'll head out later, like right now. Double bed, inside the sea stretches to the horizon. Refrigerator, there are drinks and ice. As always, yell out if there's some lag. Excuse me, a traveling bag. Shelves, see if you can put luggage on them. Bathroom, bottles of brandy. Yeah. Don't just swing the door open like that. Be more careful. Reminder, Sophie is 17. Keith is 39. It is weird having a full voice cast. You you get used to it. Um, I did personally say I'm not a big fan of Sophie's uh, voice. And it's nothing against Chocolate. Um, I think she does a great job. It's just... It's, it's not a type of voice that jives with me personally. Um... It's just the voice type, like the kind of almost squeaky pitch. Um, a reminder, Sophie is still 17 here. Um, David is now 27. So it's been a full year, at least, since the events of the Crooked Man. Try looking where you're going before you start yelling at people, young lady. Maybe you should look where you're going yourself, old man. Nasty tongue on you, huh? You bet. I was born with it. Hey now, Sophie, what are you doing? This guy almost swung the door right into my face, Papa. You said something rude to him, didn't you? Come now, apologize. But, Papa... Sophie? I'm sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. Old man. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Like, if, if I talked like this... 
when I was 17, I would have had the shit smacked out of me. Come on, Papa, let's get some ice cream at the lounge. <sighs> My apologies for that. Is she your daughter? Yes, she's my one and only precious. Full of energy, that's for sure. Oh yes, she's very excited for the trip today. I'm glad we could go. Excitement is one thing, when you try to get her to stop yelling at people over a little near collision. If she talked to the wrong guy, it could be trouble. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, Trisha's noticing she's acting like a child, yep. <laughs> You're very right, but... I think it's much better than keeping all her dissatisfaction to herself. I'm Richard Grundler. That was my daughter, Sophie. Glad to meet you. I do like Richard's voice. He's very... he's just a sweetie. Keith Berry. Did you come alone? No, with my wife. Oh, wonderful. I hope we both have a great trip. Well, excuse me. The, uh, the reason this was fully voice cast was um, because this is an homage to B-movies, actually. Um, and so Yuri wanted to go the, uh, the whole nine yards and get a voice cast. So um, VG person helped out, the person who translates uh, this helped out a lot with uh, the voices. Yuri didn't think she was going to get many auditions at all. Um, and she, like, she was flooded with them. So there's beer, there's snacks. Mmm, ice cream. Papa, let me have a bite. Here you are. <laughs> but don't put on too many pounds, all right? I, I can exercise it off. I'm fine. The Grundlers are enjoying some ice cream. We do know Sophie loves it. Keith, this is Shirley. Keith, nice to meet you. I'm Shirley Weber. Same. She came here with her husband. Oh yes, where is he now? He told me he went to take a smoke, so he might be up on the deck. Hey, what's with the suit? You're on vacation, you know. Oh, let me guess. You're with the men in black? Sorry, but I don't have sunglasses. Or a neuralizer. <laughs> Too bad. Well, let's enjoy our trip, shall we? The tea here is delicious. You like tea? Absolutely. What about you? Sorry, I can't stand this stuff. <laughs> Katie, sadly, I also knew some 17-year-olds like that. Yeah, I mean, I do too, but... Uh, Shirley does strike me more as a coffee drinker. Um. Okay, I'm actually going to try to do somebody else's intro first. Keith Baring. Who could have guessed I'd be graced by the presence of the tabloid star? I'm Lance Canal. So what brings you here? Murder on the ship? Or are you going to cause one yourself, detective? Must have a lot of time on your hands to read all those tabloids. Don't say that. These tabloids who rag on you come from the same publisher I work for. That's all it is. I'm here to take pictures. Heard there was a new tourist trap opening. They invited me here for publicity. Photographer. Don't you worry. I don't take pictures for any of those sleazy magazines. I'm just a photographer for a humble travel magazine. Not like I'm one of those paparazzi guys. Still, don't have to take pictures to get material. I can make some good money passing things on to my gossip writing colleagues. Yeah. Good luck with that. I'll be watching, detective. Okay, cool. I can do that one first. Here he is. Need a light? Thanks. Nice weather today, don't you agree? Sure is. To tell you the truth, it's my first time traveling on a ship, and it's really exciting for me. I'm just glad it's so nice out. Certainly wouldn't be out smoking on the deck here if it were raining. 
Keith Barry, detective. David Hoover, detective, huh? Very cool. I always like to watch those police dramas. But why the suit? Old habits. Never been on a ship except for the job. Did you come alone? No, I came with my wife. I was going to invite some friends along, another couple, but the husband ended up in the hospital. Came down with something? He ruined his stomach from eating too many chili dogs. Always been kind of a moron. GG, Paul. <laughs> Paul, you, you have a child by now. GG. So I invited another girl and her father. They were always saying they didn't get to go on vacation often. The Grundlers? Right. They were both really pleased. I'm glad I invited them. Too bad about my friends, though. Enjoy yourself in their place, then. <laughs> yep, that's the plan. I'm so glad you guys like David's voice. I love it. I think it fits in perfectly. Oh my gosh! Look at the size of that! It's fantastic! It really is! I can't wait to take a look inside. Man, it's like the kind of place there'd be a murder case on an old cop show. David, don't jinx it. Oh, stop being such an oddball. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're telling us we have to camp out in front for this tour. That's odd. I'm sure I told him when we'd arrive. Hold on a moment. Hello? It's Stevie from N.A. Travel. Hello? Brendan, are you there? Okay, they're here. Is everybody ready? Nigel, your tie's crooked. Fix it. Mitch, your hair's a mess. Matt, your glasses, uh, well, they're still lame. <laughs> right. Time to greet the guests. Welcome, welcome. I've been waiting for you. I'm Brendan Dumont, the proprietor of this castle. Stevie, I thought you'd never come. Thanks for leading them here. And thank you for showing up, Brendan. I was worried you weren't here. Katie, I kind of dig Lance's voice. I really like Lance's voice. Um, I think he's one of the better actors in the game. Lance himself actually ended up being a surprisingly popular character. Um, I like him too. Oh, I should introduce the... There's no need, Stevie. I'm already well aware of our guests. Mr. Lance, the Grumblers, Mr. David, and Mrs. Shirley, and last but not least, the Bearings. So you came instead of the Andersons. <laughs> what a delight. Young guy, you take care of this place all by yourself? Yes, that's right. You must be tired from that long boat ride. I'll lead you to your rooms inside. It'll be a while until dinner, so make yourself at home. Keith, look! The view is so wonderful from here. It's like we're back in Europe. You remember when we went to France and you... Shouldn't you answer that? It's Eric, no doubt. I'll call him back later. I wonder what the others are up to. I'll go take a look. Are you coming, honey? Not right now. Later. And again, all we're gonna do is walk outside right after her. Keith is, uh... He's your typical cop, your stereotypical, blah, 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 stereotypical cop. Oh my god, come on. Nice digs, though. Grunlers are next door. David Hoover and Shirley Weber. So they are married, but Shirley did keep her last name. Um, she chose to keep it professionally. I think this is Lance's room. Yeah, there we go. Lance Canal. This is storeroom. 
dining room. It says kitchen, brewery. I'm not going in that room for a reason. That advances plot. A landscape painting. Okay, and that just leads us to where we were. So here is our greatest enemy in the game, and it is the stairs. You need to zigzag up and down them. Door to the west hallway, it's locked. <sighs> Lost again. You're awful at this. It's getting a bit boring. No, you're just too good. Your poker face especially. Yeah, it probably doesn't help that you're grinning or grimacing at every hand. Am I right or what, Helena? <laughs> it's really quite cute, though. Many fangirls... Would you like to play Keith? Strip poker, but, you know, it's not. I'll pass. Aw, uh, too bad. I have a feeling you're great at poker. How about playing poker with us, honey? Nah, I'm fine. <sighs> I just can't win. Glad we're not betting any money. <laughs> yeah, you'd be flat broke. Sorry, David, honey. God, Keith, through the door, please. The plan is to tour the castle in the morning, then go around town in the afternoon. The car will be here to pick us up at one. Ah, so what time does it make lunch? Twelve seems good to me. All right, I'll tell the employees. Hi, Mr. Baring. Are you enjoying yourself? Take a look anywhere. I don't mind. I know, I know. It's a terribly large place. Okay. Oh, Mr. Baring, here's the menu for dinner tonight. Anything that needs changing? Any allergies? My wife won't eat meat. Can you change the main course? Understood. I'll tell the cook. Will she be alright with fish? Sure. And how about dessert? You have your choice of cheesecake, grass jelly, or creme brulee. Cheesecake. What kind of cheesecake is it? Rare. Hmm. She would have liked a baked one. Make it creme brulee then. And tea for after the meal. Chamomile if you can. I'll have the same. Oh, come on. Cheesecake, man. Certainly, sir. <laughs> you know your wife's tastes so well. Personally, I'm so forgetful. The other day, I brought some Casablancas home for her, and she told me she hated them. Just have to remember every little detail for next time. Absolutely. Wow, even this hall is huge. You could hold a dance here. Now that would be nice. Perhaps we should have brought some nice dresses for you. Hey, Lance. Take a picture of me and Papa, will you? Eh? Sorry, I, I don't do people. Ask a friend if you want a photo, Missy. <laughs> Cheapo. Shirley's dress is super cute. What is it, Mr. Not, Keith? Not Shirley, Sophie's. Don't play around on the stairs like that. You'll trip and fall. Oh, thanks for the concern. Not to worry, old man. I won't cause you any trouble. I want to strangle you, Sophie. <laughs> That'd be appreciated, young lady. Just like, in, in all of her just being tooty towards Keith, I'm kind of always on Keith's side. This really is quite the impressive castle. No doubt it'll draw many tourists once it's opened up. Why, I could even see it being used as a movie set. Yo, detective, out of the frame. I got a job to do here, you know? I approached you from behind. I'm not in your frame, Lance. Sure are enthusiastic about your work. <laughs> Katie, I really don't like Sophie. Yeah, I... It's, uh, like I said, it gets annoying when she, like, she's learned her lesson from the Sandmen, like, not to let, like, to speak her mind about things, but she's a bit too forward about it, and she's a bit too childish, again, for 17 years old. But this is me who was brought up when I was, like, nine, not to speak like this to people. Um, like, I would get hit upside the head, like, or smacked, or it's spanked, you know, wash my mouth out, my mouth washed out, so people call that child abuse, that, that's parenting, like, sorry, that's not actually beating your child, but anyway, like, yeah, okay, Trisha agrees too, why did Sophie become such a bitch? I will say she does develop more in the next game, um, and she's, like, way better, um, but yeah, she's, like, ch uh, Chocolate does a really, she has a very good range with Sophie, actually, she does a good job 
um, with Sophie's childishness in this game. And then she does a, a good job with Sophie maturing more in the next game. Don't need any pics of you. Thought I told you I'm not a gossip kind of guy. You're the one providing the music. I like how the music in the game is kind of meta. Um, and this game's uh, music theme is uh, hip hop. I mentioned that before. But it is very hip hop inspired. Okay, now I can advance the plot. I have gone and talked to everybody. You can miss out on those optional conversations, but it's just nice for flavor. There's a thick, old looking book. Oh, what a surprise. So this is where you were. Sorry for wandering in here. Oh, no, no. I don't mind. Such a large study, isn't it? I used to play hide-and-seek in here as a kid, and my dad always told me off. So many piles of old, precious books, too. Unfortunately, I don't really know how much they're worth. Why would you want to sell this? You're terrible. <laughs> as a bibliophile, I'm offended. Is that book about the history of the castle? Ah, you've been doing some reading. A very disturbing history, isn't it? The former lord of the castle was quite a tyrant. He severely taxed the islanders and persecuted anyone who rebelled. There are many odd rooms in this castle, actually. I'm sure they were used for punishment. Eh, but you'll be toured through them tomorrow, so... You said you managed this place yourself. Must be hard. Well, only as of late. I went to film school, actually, and did some work in Hollywood. It wasn't too long ago I returned here. After my parents' death, I inherited the property, you see. Yes, it's a hard job to do alone, especially with all those strange rooms. So I thought I'd promote this place as a tourist destination. Sounds legit. I'm not too interested in the castle myself. I'd hate to live out the rest of my days in a deserted place like this. This tour is kind of a test drive, you might say. And CV has been a great help with everything. It's not like this could be horribly haunted. No need to worry. I'm sure it'll be a hit soon. Oh, I do hope you're right. Say, Mr. Baring, you're a detective, right? That's so neat. I love police dramas, and I watch Law and Order all the time. Sorry, but it's not a pretty job. Well, in the eyes of an ordinary citizen who blends into the crowd, I think it's swell. <laughs> I'm jealous. Hell, I'm jealous that you own a castle. Must attract a lot of girls. <laughs> I wish it would. I'd love to meet a wonderful woman like you have. Well, if you'll excuse me. Hey, David, you going to eat your banya cauda? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe you can have it. Why don't you want it? It's delicious. He won't eat it because he hates anchovies. Solidarity, David. Really? That's why? That's so cute. Remember, Sophie did have her pink gem taken. Um, so her affection towards David is now just very platonic. She literally cannot feel love for people. Uh, like, yeah, Brendan's voice actor talks super fast and I'm not sure why. I guess because he's kind of supposed to be like this fast talking dude, you know, like. And kind of make it clear that like. This is, you know, like, like the, the fast-talking businessman, I think, is what he was going for. I, I mean, it, it smells so raw. And hey, don't call me cute, okay? Cool would be fine. No, David, you're, you're cute. It's okay. You already points, uh, pokes fun at that every chance she gets. <laughs> Jeez, Helena's laughing too? Cause it's cute, right, Shirley? Oh, one thing in this nut, uh, one thing in this game that drives me nuts is how they pronounce Helena's name. Some characters say it Helena, and others say it Helena, and it's Helena, but others say it Helena, and it drives me crazy. If we're talking cute, I think that would be you, Missy. Pardon me. You can have the rest of it. You won't be having any more? No.
Gosh, Mr. Keith never smiles. What's got him in a tizzy? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Renan's like, you won't have any more? And Keith's like, no. Like, Keith just shuts people down, just flat. I love it. He's always that way. <laughs> what is he, a robot? <laughs> a robot detective? So he's robo- Ow! Don't be rude. <laughs> I'm sorry, that actually makes me legitimately laugh every time. <laughs> That's good comedic timing. Ah, uh, Robocop. I remember going to see that with my wife back in college. He may be that way now, but he used to be very funny, you know. He was always making me laugh. I told him he should consider being a comedian. Really? I don't believe it. A uh, comedian or not, he's still the laughing stock of some magazines. You know about that, don't you, miss? Uh, Lance, play nice. Keith! Jeez, man, why don't you answer your calls? I've been trying all day! Cause I'm on vacation, Eric. What do you need? What do you do with the profiling info for the investigation? It's on your desk. What? It's not there. It's not. It's nowhere. It's completely and totally. Oh, there it is! <laughs> I feel like Eric is like the rich man's Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> and I mean that in like a, a good way. <laughs> is that what you call 20 times over? I called because you went on vacation without saying a word to me. Tell me before you hand this stuff over. I mean, why in the world would you take a vacation in a hellish time like this? And please, answer your calls. How many times do I have to tell you? He's on vacation. He doesn't have to do jack shit. He was forced to take a vacation. He shouldn't be answering his phone, actually. Frankly, you should just clean up your desk. Hell, mine too. Papers are going to topple over. They'll start attracting flies. Man, I don't wanna. You do it, Keith. If you don't have it cleaned up once I'm back, I'll burn it all. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. Kick the thread in, aren't we, Keithy? Sorry, I'll clean up. You better. So what's the situation over there? Ah, well, you see... Ah, oh, hey! Hey, how's it going? Having a good trip? <sighs> Hand it back to Eric. I don't need you right now. Harsh, harsh. You don't need Eric, neither, all right? Now, just hang up and enjoy your trip. At least tell me the situation over there. Situation, eh? Got no obligation to tell anyone who's not on the crime scene. Come on, dick. You gonna ignore your honey again? What, you wanna try and investigate this over the phone? Boy, what's the point of giving you a vacation anyway? I can sleep when I'm dead. I heard that so many times in college. I'm just saying, don't stick your neck into this. Plus, Eric's always relied on you too much. Now's the time to whip him into shape. Now, don't call again. Got it? I ain't gonna tell you nothing. Now go to hell. Same to you. So long. <laughs> I love the relationship that um Keith and Anderson have because you can you can tell they're friends. Just especially in that um, that exchange of like, oh, go to hell. Yeah, same to you. Well, did you take some good pictures? Yeah, they're decent. You'll show us more tomorrow, yeah? Is there anywhere that's off limits? I haven't really asked Brendan about that. I'll check with him tomorrow. Lance and Stevie are talking about tomorrow. That one piece looks really good on you. I'm glad I bought it for you. <laughs> this one's my favorite. Since you picked it out, of course. So it's good. Sophie actually does have a really uh, healthy, like, friendly relationship with uh, Shirley and David. Shirley sees her as a little sister. It's actually very cute. So I said I wanted to see Robocop, but my wife said she wanted to see Platoon. And we fought and fought. In the end, Robocop won, but things were a bit stormy after that. I know how that goes. Shirley and I never want to see the same movies. A lot of the time we come to the theater together, but then go our separate ways. 
David and Richard are talking. But there's no Helena. Or Brendan, but I'm guessing he just fucked off to his quarters. Oh, shit. I'll relearn this castle, I promise. I need to go through this door. Keith, you took your call? Yeah. S sorry for for going back without you. I wanted to take a sh shower. Uh, uh, I'm going to bed now. Good night. Why were you crying? Sit down. Ooh, that never says anything good. I want to talk for a bit. Double ooh. I wanted to tell you this once we got back from this trip, but it's too hard for me. We're at a very important crossroads, a kind of D-Day. D-Day? For a decision, I guess, or a divorce. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but I couldn't say it. You want a divorce? Do you hate me? No! That's not it! No, I couldn't hate you! It's not that! It's not you! It's a problem with me. With you? I'm going to bed. Well, finish this conversation when we get home. Why would you do that? <laughs> Go to this wonderful tourist vacation for like a week or so, I think they're supposed to stay. The first night she drops the bomb on him that she wants a divorce and I uh, gotta wait a week. Good night. I love you. I told you, if I can just get some juicy tidbits, sales will shoot up for you, my man. Sheesh, didn't I tell you? I can't take photos of people. You can keep your money if you want pics of that rude-ass detective. Oh, yeah, his, his girl's all right. Oh, yeah, she's a good one. Gotta wonder why she's with a snooze fest like him. <laughs> not a bad idea. Well, I'd love to see him keep his cool even when his girl's taken. All right, Lance. Lazy. We're going to tour the island tomorrow, right? I can't wait. That's right, but you'd better get to bed soon so you can wake up tomorrow, yes? What are you saying, Papa? You gotta enjoy both days and nights on vacation, right? We should talk lots. Why, we already spoke with the others plenty today, and I'm sure they're all going to sleep now. Hmm, but I didn't talk to you much, Papa. Come on, let's talk. <laughs> That's my selfish little girl. Hey, Papa? Was Mama a good person? Did you and Mama get along like David and Shirley? Oh, absolutely. I've never met a person finer than your mother. You're starting to remind me of her yourself, though you'd need to be a bit more mature. So I can't be childish, huh? Now, Sophie, you can be whatever you want to be. No matter what, you're a precious family to me. A true treasure. And your mother as well, of course. <laughs> Got a text from Paul. Bring back souvenirs, you ass. Paul, it was your fault for fucking making yourself sick. What's wrong? Doesn't Helena remind you of your mother? Ooh, right for the fucking jugular on that one. Maybe so. There's kind of that air about her now that you mention it. But what's this all of a sudden? Then again, it has been a year and a half, I think, since the events of the Crooked Man, so... Never mind, I just had a thought. David's been coping extraordinarily well. You don't look so good. Did something happen? 
Well, I've never been on a trip like this before. I don't know how I should act. It's different from traveling with friends, isn't it? Hey, just enjoy yourself. You won't have any fun worrying over everything. We'll make some great memories. What about your memories with me? We could always use more. I wonder how many more we need. Why don't we start now? Smooth operator. Oh, look at the time. Better get to sleep. Why would you turn that down? <laughs> Surely, come on. <laughs> all, all he needed to do was just reach down and start playing some Marvin Gaye. Hey, what about making memories? <laughs> hey, David! Stop it! I'm ticklish! Give me a break. Like, that's gonna be a fond memory. <laughs> Good night. Enjoy yourself tomorrow. Night. Somebody put a stop to that asshole's calls. Where's my phone? Huh. That's not his phone, that's an ashtray. Yeah, I agree. David is actually super smooth right there. But, uh, this game does give a lot of insight into Shirley, and I, I like that quite a bit. Because we really did not get to know her that well in the past two games. Helena? Helena? I, God, you have to know how to say your wife's name properly. Excuse me. There's a piece of paper slipped under the door. Attention, a wonderful show is about to begin. Please come to the reception hall. Everybody's door is open. And this is David and Shirley's room and they're not there. Richard and Sophie are gone. And... Lance is gone. She's getting a divorce because her husband can't even say her name correctly. So sorry to disturb your slumber, detective. Davosity, he was in the last one uh, for a very brief cameo as the boogeyman. Um, he's definitely one of the best performances in the game. But you know it'd be a waste to sleep on such a wondrous night. Ah, it really is a great set, don't you agree? All it needs is me standing on stage, and then... perfection. 
Well, get up there then. <laughs> Keith is not impressed by your bullshit, Big Bad. How do you do, detective? I am... <clears throat> Excuse me. How do you do, detective? I am the boogeyman. The organizer of this marvelous game soon to begin. The boogeyman's design is probably my favorite. Um, like the crooked man was really cool and horrifying, but I love the kind of class the boogeyman has, like with the the noose as a um as a tie. It's so cool. Game. Yes, a very special game for the night of a very joyous trip. Oh, pardon me. Um, let me consult my cheat sheet. Oh, and he's not afraid to get meta as shit. Now, let's see here. You're the player and must chase the boogeyman. If you catch him, you win. And that's the happy ending. If you don't catch him, you lose. And what awful bad ending may await you then? So, what do you think of that? You look pretty fast, Mr. Detective, so you might catch me real quick. That'd be pretty boring now, wouldn't it? Ooh, I know. How's this for an idea? How about I kill everyone but you, and you have to stop me? Is this stupid prank part of the tour? How long it's not in a while, you know? Keith doesn't give a shit. Stupid? How dare! You'll see. Oh, you'll see. It'll be the best game you ever did see. Let me guess. Are you nervous? Worry not. I've even prepared a tutorial for you. And now, we're about to have the opening cutscene. You meta son of a bitch. Tell me, detective. Are you familiar with the Boogeyman? All the evil and sadness in this world can be blamed on the Boogie. He's always watching from inside your closet. The Boogeyman is the king of evil and terror. <clears throat> Katie, I can't. Sorry, I'm laughing at Katie's uh thing in the chat. I'm not going to read it out loud. You horrible person. Meanwhile, you're a detective, ally to the weak citizens, and because it's you versus me, a simple game this may be, but it's also a battle of good and evil. Such a holy battle needs a spectacular opening, yes? Indeed, sacrificial blood must spill. Brendan. Let him down. This joke is going too far. Joke? <laughs> what a laugh. I'm always deadly serious. Shouldn't you know from experience? People who do things to make you think the words they've gotta be joking are usually very serious. And they're just messed up in here. Right then, detective. The blood of this homely boy should add some nice color to our game. I don't know if I called Brendan homely. He came from a castle. Oh yes, this'll be quite a night. Well, never mind. Yeehaw! Now the game begins, detective. Catch me if you can before more of that lovely blood stains the castle floors. Cool. The hole seems deep, you can't see a thing. So this game is also interesting in that um, Keith does not have any inner thoughts. Okay, I'm trying to go for the achievement um, the boogie was here where you investigate like every fucking bit of red writing you ever see. So, it's it's a bit... Uh, I'm pretty sure the door behind the boogeyman is locked, actually. Like, he... Yeah, he locked the door behind him, so I need to go back anyway. Okay, can't do anything there. 
Yeah, the Boogeyman's a very interesting villain in that he's someone that you can't like you're like oh you're a joker rip off you're ripping off like this trope and that trope and you're doing this and that and the other but like at the same time you have to take him seriously like when you're not expecting him to be serious he punches you in the gut okay sorry i'm just like seeing if he just decided to fucking surprise me with red writing because the uh the achievement guide does actually not help. It's just like, you just want to check everywhere. A toolbox. Got a wrench hammer. That's it. Seems to be a breaker up on the wall. That's the fucking cafeteria. I always do this. Is there some writing and blood on the floor? A dead cook. There are bruises on the back of his head. A dead cook. A kitchen knife is stuck deep in his head. This is why I put mature content warning on here. A light switch. Does nothing. The keyhole is clotted with something and the door won't open. There's a note on the door. Did you already open that red wine I prepared? A dead servant. There's a corkscrew stuck in his head. Well. <laughs> Yum. Dead servant. Broke open the lock with a corkscrew. Lights. Turn on the lights. Stevie, are you there? Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. You can't you can hear Stevie saying turn on the lights, but can't see anything. It'd be dangerous to go in blind. And yeah, this game is also unique in that uh, instead of chase, instead of being chased by uh, like the Crooked Man or the Sandman, you are chasing the Boogeyman. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. There's blood. There's writing Turn on blood on the floor. Lights. A blood-stained broom Turn seems it was used to write the words lights. on the floor. Excuse me, Stevie. Lights. One of the drawers is slightly ajar. Something's inside it. Got a key. Turn on the lights. Second floor passage. Turn on the lights. Turn on his legs and arms are bound to the chair. There's a large gash on his back. Turn on the lights. Repeat. Turn on the lights. That's the way, Stevie. You're a real great tour guide. Now keep repeating. You have to finish your job if you want to go back to your wife in Connecticut. Oops. Someone's eavesdropping on our conversation. Detective, you took your time, didn't you? You did this? Thought I told you I prepared a tutorial. Now you should have a real good grasp of the way this game goes. In short, you go too slow, the others end up like this, too. 
Stevie did such a good job. Showed you just what you needed to do. Did you kill those servants too? Oh, they're just for show. Making it look good helped spice the game up. I'll let you off the hook there, since they kicked it while you were still snoozing away. So what do you think? Gotten you a little more motivated, Detective? Or maybe I'm making you quiver in your boots. Where'd you take the others? It'd be no fun in games if I told you that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot to get done. Good luck, Detective, because for you, nothing could be a bigger disgrace than failing to save someone you could have, right? Tiny little thing I love is that you can still hear Stevie repeating turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Stevie, stop. That's enough. It just it just adds a little bit of like ooh, bone chill. It's cold. It's all right. It'll get better soon. It's very sweet of you, Keith. He's not breathing anymore. There's a large gash on his back and traces of something injected into his arm. I noticed Katie in earlier comments had called Keith kind of an ass, and yes, he is. Yeah, I do feel bad for Stevie. It, it, it falls into a trope that the media falls into nowadays, which is, um, like, oh, give a character a wife or kids and suddenly like they're relatable and likable and that's like a cheap tactic in a lot of movies to get you to like the main character but because stevie's a side character i think it works very well that you just know that he had a wife waiting for him for main characters though it's pretty sloppy writing all right let's uh yes Aha! Okay. Um, sorry, I'm now reading one of the happy ending flags. So. Alright. To the east hallway. A severed head, seemingly a, ser seemingly a servant's. Say it, Katie. Katie goes, I can make an awful comment and I won't say it. There's something in his mouth. Let's take what's inside. <laughs> it was a squirt gun. Just to squirt blood at me. Severed head, a small water gun is set up in the mouth. Fucking asshole. Well, he had a wife. Now he has a widow waiting for him. God damn it. Oh, hello. A headless corpse. Something fastened to the hand. Got a videotape. And these videotapes are really what's important. And I found a few of them, but they break. Uh, for uh, after certain points in the game. Okay, so... Into the room on the west side of the second floor. Sorry, again, I'm just following the, uh, the happy end flag. Oof. A servant's corpse is stuck head first into the fish tank. The apparent cause of death is a big gash on the back of his neck. Mmm, bloody fish. So let's turn on those ambient lights. I'll not be unlucky fish. Let's 
so that's a clue to go to the dining hall. I don't know why it says cafeteria. And check this mounted fish. Looking closely, there's something in its mouth. Got the feeder key. Theater key I actually did not get on my last run through, so. Ah, and that would also be why I didn't get the achievement for all the dead bodies. The corpse sits on the sofa, the back of his neck has a long gash. A screen, brandy and a glass on the table, a VHS tape deck and a projector. This tunes you on. Okay, cool. And now I can uh, proceed. Oh, this is a giant obnoxious puzzle. Employee lodging. A dead servant. There's a note on the wall. Control panel for pull down stairs to third floor. Passcode 21653704. That is incorrect. That's part of the... Um, it's part of the puzzle. Um, it's actually a hint. Um, you have to go back to the record room. Um, and the, now I'm, I'm past the, like, the happy end thing right now. Um, I'm back on track. So what that means is it's actually a puzzle for this. Um, the color used for the word boogie in the albums on both sides. So the numbers were two, one. Um, so purple, two, one, is it? But yeah, it's a uh, purple, red, white, orange, pink, green, blue, yellow, seven one zero six five three two four. It's one of those arbitrary horror game puzzles. Okay. Mounted animal looks like an eagle. It has a gem in its eye. A scrap of paper. Well, detective, have the lambs stop, stopped screaming? Get the lambs as far away from the big bad predator as you can. Keep them safe behind your back. A mounted animal looks like a wolf. So there's two predators. So how do you keep them safe? That will be solved later. Okay. I was covering everything I could because I want to get all the red writing and see all the dead bodies. Okay, so here's where the actual number comes in. Seven. Oh, yeah, purple. Yep. Red. So seven, one, zero, six, five. Three, two, four. Mm -hmm. 
more stairs. Ah, hmm. Okay, so now I have another happy ending thing, so I actually might die here a bit. If you step in front of those statues, they slice you. So I have to move carefully. You just can't be in the square in front of them. I have to navigate to the painting in the back. Uh, but you can push the suit of armor just below it to safely reach it. Three of the armors surround and face a single tile, and when you step on it, they'll swing their swords to the floor. After seeing the painting, push those three artworks forward so that they'll strike that tile. I might be better actually navigating with my... I'm um, sorry for the clackety-clack, but I think this is actually a safer way to navigate. Aha! Okay. Now that I've looked at it, uh, three of the armors surround and face a single tile. I would think it would be these three? There, I've seen the painting. I have to see the painting too. Uh, continue. So, okay, so I think I know what I have to do here. Oh, again, the hit detection is a little wonky, just like with the fire. Yep. I jumped. <laughs> I actually did jump. So I have to be careful. Okay. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't go for the happy end flags on the other one. Oh. I still jumped. Depth perception is not my best friend. Okay, let me push you in that way just to make things a little bit easier. Okay. Push you in. I'm actually not looking up. There's actually like no picture reference for this as well. So this is me. Ha! Something in the broken stone. Got a bit key. It saved like five times. Um, okay, open the door to the left of the armor maze with a wrench hammer. And some kicks. Keith likes to kick things. Ah, okay, I did not do this before either. Again, I've seen a playthrough of this with the happy ending, and I didn't really pay attention to how we got to this. Bit key. Ha ha. These fucking stairs. As you can tell, I'm good at navigating them. Helena. Keith? Keith, are you okay? Are you hurt? Uh, something I want to point out, and you actually won't know why uh, until the next game. But whenever you see Keith or Helena and their ring fingers, you can see Keith's a little bit below the box, the dialogue box. Notice he has two fingers on his um, on his left ring finger. He has his wedding band, and then he has a gold band. Um, that was done on purpose, and the reason why, and Helena has the exact same. The reason why is explained in the next game. I'm fine. What about you? Why well, Keith has it anyway. We don't really know what's going to happen with Helena right now, but we see that she does have it as well. Keith, 
Keith, thank goodness, thank goodness. Helena, your leg's wounded. Hold on, I'll get over there. Keith, I'm fine. I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Helena? Wait, Helena, I'll be right there. Don't move from that spot. I'm fine. I swear. I'll be fine. Wait for me, Keith. I'll... Don't worry. I'll... Helena! Okay, Katie goes, his sprite, man. She said that a little bit ago. What about uh, Keith's sprite? And that was a bit of a weird scene because Helena obviously needs help. Fuck you, statue puzzle. Boogie is written on the floor with some kind of luminous paint. Boogles. Boggy. Bogey. Boodoo. One eye is larger than the other. I thought that's what you were going to say. On this, it's fine. It's just on the, <laughs> on the menu screen. It looks like he's fucking freaking out. Time for a pop quiz. Do you know what boogie is made of? B-O-G-I and E. Give me this axe. Give it. I have a ranch hammer. Lance. D d detective! Oh, what did you notice before the scene continues? That's his confidence wink! What up, Ian? <laughs> Ian, I hope you're enjoying this too because of all the B-slasher references. So is the drawn eyes of the boogeyman. Very astute observation, Katie! Hey, save me already, damn it! Untie these things! If you want them off that bad, you should have asked me, Lens. Ah, oh, they're different, though. They're on the opposite side. Hey, hurry up. Save me. Please. Hey there, detective. Whoa there, don't move a muscle. You have to give the bad guy a chance to say some lines. Oh, Katie really likes the sleazeball lance. <laughs> she save him. Hurry, Keith, get me out of here. What a noisy pest you are, Lance. Already forgotten your punishment for howling like that before. Huh? Bad dog. Let me shift in my chair a little bit. Sorry, gotta get comfy. Ah! Don't move. I already said that, didn't I? Like I said, he's hokey, but uh, don't fuck with him. If you ask me, detective, photographers are just the worst people in the whole world. They capture the world in their lens and tell the world that this is reality. But it isn't, is it? Reality has pain, it has suffering, and most importantly, it has fear. The public sees this world you're fighting against in a distorted form, thanks to these wretched photographers. So now, I'm thinking this coward should be taught what real pain is like. Good idea, don't you think? Now, Lance, you seem like a coward who can only see reality through a lens. So I'll take a photo for you. So this is very Jigsaw-esque. 
And I'll put that photo in a frame, hang it up, play some flowers, and pray. On the anniversary of your death. Smile for the camera, Lance. And yeah, you're on a timer. Camera placed to a tripod, it's set to collapse photos. There's a box on the wall. Nope, that's too fucking obvious. Fuck you, I have an axe. <laughs> Katie's freaking out in the chat. <laughs> I'm actually impressed you could uh, get upside down with that. And the Polaroid is taking pictures as time kicks away. Some sort of operation console. Iron shelves they won't open. There's a key on the rack. Restraints key. And it's tied down with leather boot, uh, belts, nut boots. They're locked on and won't come loose. Bada bing, bada boom. I'll stop the bleeding. Be safe, Katie. <sighs> what a crappy photo. This is why I hate taking pics of people. Damn it. Why'd this happen to me? Freaking out and howling. What a loser I am. Your life was in danger. I'd be worried if you weren't frightened. Thank you, Keith. And what would you know, huh? He's a cop! A detective, actually. When I was new to my job, I got shot in the leg. I lost my cool and screamed, and my boss at the time punched me. Told me that if I freaked out, nobody would trust me. That was not Anderson, by the way. Why are you here, Lance? Oh, hell if I know. I nodded off on the sofa and then, uh, woke up all tied up. Oh, you like Lance because he reminds you of Reno. You didn't notice being transported here? I said I was sleeping, didn't I? I'll tell you what I know. That man's kidnapped everyone who was on the tour. I haven't found any of them yet besides you, Brendan, Stevie, and the employees were all killed. Yeah, uh, Lance does kind of have the Quentin Flynn uh, draw to it. Huh? Killed? He's voiced by a YouTuber called Nervus. N-U-R-V-U-S-S. -S. I slept from 9 to about midnight. Around 12.05, the man decapitated Brendan. Stevie died around 12.20. He was tied to a chair, cut open from his neck down to his back. He was left there immobile until he died of blood loss. Judging from the amount of blood and how much it had dried, the wound was probably inflicted about 30 minutes before I found him. He's... seriously dead? Well, he was still hanging by a thread by the time I arrived. Wasn't there... some way to save him? I'm not a doctor. Even if I were, he'd lost too much blood. So you just stood in front of dying Stevie, calculating his time of death? <sighs> Don't harp on every detail. Lance, can you stand? I'm going to look for the others. You come with me. I can't leave you alone. And what if I can't stand, huh? I'll carry you. Uh, uh, give me a break. Hey, go look for the others if you want, but don't you think it'd be faster to nail that guy down first? Leaving him alone is downright dangerous. This is a hostage situation. Who knows how many others are being slowly killed like Stevie? Catching him is pointless if we can't guarantee everyone's safety. He's already killed several people. I'm playing catch-up at this point. I can't suffer any more careless losses. Losses? Huh. That what you call murders. Quiet. Stop hounding me. Lance, this is really not the time. That kind of thing gets the attention of civil liberty groups. Whoop. Huh? Let's go. Lance is in my party. 
actually need to go back in here. And he does move slower due to his leg injury, which I appreciate. Shelves are loose and unstable. Knock him down. Ah, Lance. Uh, the impact seems to have knocked off a sideboard. We're gonna take that. You right there, Lance? Um... Uh, I forget what this is for, to be quite honest. But the key to it is one, two, one, one, one. Well done. Give me a kiss of love. Ugh. Yeah, I agree. Well, Lance, since you're glitched, I'll just leave you here. <laughs> no, he just pops up behind you in the next room. All right. Ugh. He's fine. I had to save him from the glitch. A painting. There's text engraved into the frame. The coward will look toward the protector with respect, yet in times of crisis they find relief in looking away and keeping a weapon nearby. The fool is indifferent to both the protector and the eye of evil. As such, they are not even aware of where they stand. The rebel scorns the protector and faces away from them, yet in times of crisis, they are the most faithful to the protector, hiding behind their back. That's actually in reference to the sheep puzzle. Oi, let's not go any farther. Yuri does like to use classic paintings in uh, Mermaid Swamp. She uses uh, pictures of Ophelia. Um, like all over the place and they're actually very thematically important Mermaid Swamp is a really good game by Yuri, it's just not on Steam but it did have a remake with uh, Japanese voice actors very good door went open on the door is an emblem and a note just do what you, do what you want just do what you yeah just do what you want just do what you always do Okay. It's engraved with an emblem of an eagle. Looks like there's something missing in the eye. We have seen something. I'm sorry, Lance. Whoa! God! I forgot about that. I got myself killed, not Lance, though. Yay! Take it you're not a fan of Keith. Katie. Oh yeah, I actually did forget about that. So, just in case. I, this is why I have to remember to spastic save. Especially in this game. It did have a googly eye. That's where we're trying to go, but we can't take... What? <laughs> Ian, the fuck was that? Uh, we're gonna find out, bud. Um, okay, we're gonna save. First of all. Okay. Okay. Um, this is where we got the iron plate. Lance, look down that hallway. Yeah, Katie, you've got the right idea. We just, uh... You mean that doll in the wheelchair? Oh, it's got a gun. Yeah, we got, um... The one other game I can think of that actually did that, in a sense, uh, was this horror game... Uh, I forget what it's called right now. But you're, like, you're blind and you're wandering around a manor trying to figure out the, uh, the path behind it. And, like, there's one point where you're... All these little, uh, Moppet dolls are trying to kill you with guns. That's what it reminds me of. 
Um, but I'm sure it's a reference to some kind of a horror movie. Maybe Chucky, but the doll moved around on its own at that point, and he didn't have a gun. He had a knife. Um, yeah, we can't take Lance back through the room of armor, though. Um, if you try to, it says, like, it's too dangerous to take uh, an injured man through, because Lance is moving so slowly. I don't know how the thing works, but we'll be gunned down if we're not careful. So, you be the target for a second. Say what? You want me dead, man? Just stand on that end and block the bullets with this plate. Even a wounded man can manage that much. I'll take care of the doll while you're doing that. Do you realize how stupid that sounds? We'll both die if we're not careful. You've got the physique to hide behind a shield. Get in there and don't get shot. Well, do you want to take out the doll, Lance? Is that a no? Fine, I'll do this myself. Stand back and watch, you chicken. Hey! Uh, don't scream in my ear. Alright, I'll be your stupid target. You better be able to handle that doll. And you never call me chicken again. You got that, you damn detective? Cheep, 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 cheep. Sure, I appreciate it. Always grateful to have a good citizen's aid. Don't call me a chicken, you turkey. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Go. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Why, you... You loose cannon. What were you planning to do if I got shot? But a damn good cop. Let's move. <laughs> Keith... <laughs> Keith, you're such an ass. Toppled wheelchair and a doll. The doll's head came off and the gun is in pieces. What's wrong, McFly? Chicken? Thank you, Ian. Ugh. Give me your tender kiss. A kiss of love? Release the inside lock. Ah, okay. So actually, if you try to go in the quarters with uh, dead bodies. Not going in? If you want to puke, go right ahead. But I'm not going to be the one to clean it up. You cannot. Okay, so we're in a relatively safe area right now. I just, I forgot about that doll puzzle completely, actually. Um... Fucking inventory here. The wrench hammer. Oh, right. We had that sheet puzzle. Yes. And we need Lance's input for this. Belgian Shepherd, huh? That brings me back. Isn't it a wolf? Similar, but nah. Lived on a farm in Montana when I was a kid. There were tons of these guys. The sheepdogs. So they're protectors. Which we wouldn't have known without Lance's input. Thank you, Lance. So, the sheep have to be standing a certain way. And that's what the puzzle was referring to. Uh, let's see here. And yeah, I'm using a guide just for efficiency sake hey pistol let me close that image now because I don't need it oh shit thank you sorry there are things that are like for happy ending um oh I actually have to open another damn window uh, but, uh, yeah, th there are a lot of these, like, for happy ending click to show, so I need to be careful that I'm hitting all these flags. If you miss one, you're screwed. Okay. Pistol on the wall is falling off. Got a pistol. No, Lance... Cover your ears, Lance. God, you should have told me you're gonna fire that thing. 
It's like you're trying to freak me out. Do I have to give you notice for everything to keep you from wetting yourself? That seems... Forget it. You sure this was the best place for that? There was only one bullet. Should have kept it for later. Couldn't trust someone else to carry a loaded gun around. Just be glad it didn't discharge and blow off a hand. Well, that was a text from over an hour ago from when I got interrupted. And ha, that's actually foreshadowing. I don't think that was intentional. That's foreshadowing for a bad ending in The Hanged Man. The head of the eagle shot off. The gem in its eye has fallen out. There's some sort of a hook attached to it. Nope. We can't take Lance through that, even if we want to. And he magically teleports behind me whenever I go into a new room, so it's fine. So Katie had that uh, puzzle solved. Bingo, bingo. Lance. Lance, you have the air of the crooked man. Come on. You guys are going to get used to seeing this hallway quite a bit. It's red writing on the wall. Fight with monsters, I believe it says. Can't make that jump with Lance here, though. You would think it wraps around, but it doesn't. This castle can get very confusing if you're not careful. Yeah, because there's a dead end right there. Hey, Detective Lance, you're pretty late. Had trouble leading the wounded man along, is it? Listen, Lance, don't get in the detective's way. This game is between me and him, you know. If you interfere too much, I'll punish you again. Get away from there. Oh, how keen, Detective. Just as you surmised, there's someone you need to protect here. Oh yes, Detective, there's something I've been meaning to ask. Say there were two helpless people in peril. Say you had to save one, and just leave the other behind. Alright, take your guesses right now. Who is behind here, Sophie and Richard, or David and Shirley? Who would you save in that case? This is another Saw-esque puzzle. What if you had to choose between a girl with a bright future or an adult doing good work for society? <laughs> you bastard! Justice is heartless, you see. It's unfair. It's all choosy. But I'm impartial. I can send these two to hell together. So, detective, which will you save? And don't tell me both. As soon as you raise one, the other will fall. And you know what'll happen down that hole, don't you? Truth is, though, I know who you really want to save. Oh, how I pity you, detective. Bye-bye now. Hey, you guys okay? Keith, please, save Sophie, I'm begging you. No, Papa, don't! Mr. Keith, save Papa! Please! So we're not on the timer for this one. Sophie, it'll be okay. Stay calm, we'll be fine. Okay, we're 
We're gonna take Lance with us. Don't cry. Don't cry. It'll be okay. I'm sure I'd guess David and Shirley. Whoa! You gonna lift Richard and drop Sophie? You really sure? If the spikes break the table... Yeah, that's what's beneath the pit. She won't be hurt. Lance, hold the lever when I say pull. Sophie, I'm going to lift Richard and drop you. No, Keith, drop me, please. Don't put my dear daughter in danger. Quiet. Sophie, don't look down, okay? We'll be fine if you don't look down. You with me? No funny stuff. Don't cry, Sophie. I won't let you die. I won't even let you get hurt. I promise. So believe me, and just don't move. Can you promise me that? Okay. That's a good girl. Lance, are you ready? Ian asked a good question. Does Keith ever have emotion? There's a reason. Um, Because that was actually an annoyance of mine watching a playthrough of this at first going, why the fuck isn't he emoting? Um, and there's actually a very good reason for it. So that's a good question, Ian. Yeah. Pull. Hey! Mr. Keith, are you okay, Mr. Keith? Keith takes a while to grow on you. Um, I didn't like him during the original playthrough, but, uh... Actually, the bad endings give you more of an insight into... Uh, kind of like who he is and his mentality um, so again after I do this I recommend you do watch Manly Badass Heroes uh, Bad Endings um, each one kind of gives you insight into Keith's mentality and yeah Trisha's right Helena said he used to be far uh, more of emotion but not anymore um, and Yuri actually picked the most emotion emotionless voice actor um I will say that uh, she said a lot of people were doing too emotional uh, readings of Keith and she wanted someone who was more of a deadpan snarker no matter what. Um, so yeah, Keith took me a while, like Keith took a while to grow on me, but I actually do like him quite a bit. How about you? I I'm fine. I don't have a scratch on me, but... You, Mr. Keith? Glad to hear it. Sorry, little lady, but could you move it? It feels like I'm going to be crushed to death. Papa! Sophie! Oh, Sophie. I'm so glad you're safe. Papa. Papa, it was so scary. Hey, you okay? I had no idea you were gonna... And, like, we see bouts of kindness from Keith, like him co covering Stevie with his jacket, even though he didn't have to, because Stevie was dead at that point. But, you know, he covered him with his jacket when Stevie said, it's cold. He said, it's good. you're going to be okay. He jumped in the pit after Sophie. Now my fire alarm's going off. Hang on. Let me mute that. <laughs> 